I'm Bob from Creation Station. This is Tech Talk Weekly, our weekly show where we talk about two to three cool tech topics in the in the news, give you a fun library fact and get you on your way in about 15 to 20 minutes. Today, my guest host is Makiba Foster from Arlick, African American Research Library and Cultural Center. How are you doing, Makiba? I am fabulous. Doing well. Thanks for having me here today. Glad to have you. You you had Makiba is the director, um, bringing in a lot of very cool programming uh, to, and has started some really fun series out there. I'm going to grab you after we cover these news stories about some of that stuff, because I really okay. like those conversations that you guys have been going on. We've sure. got some interesting stories today. Um, some things that came out. One of the, the my first one here came out over Labor Day weekend, and I wanted to, to talk about it because. <laughs> If it would have come out during the regular week, I think everybody would have been freaking out about this one. Um, so there's a solar storm that went by us on Saturday, this past Saturday of Labor Day weekend. You didn't notice it. Nobody noticed it. It was a very weak one. It didn't come close to the earth at all, anything like that. However, it charged up this debate about what would happen if the next one really happens. When you got a chance to look at these stories there, Makiba, what did you think about this uh, doomsday weather? Now that we have to worry about space weather in addition to hurricanes. You know, I'm just waiting for them to actually announce a real Sharknado, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, all of this is kind of crazy. Um, but um, I didn't I didn't notice anything different about the weather this weekend. No. Um, but... Uh, I, I I I can't help but to wonder, like, okay, we're we're experiencing all of these crazy weather events here on Earth, and some of that is because of global warming. And I'm just wondering whether or not, like, these solar superstorms and stuff like that, like, does does global warming kind of reflect back to the, it the global warming? And... Global warming directly doesn't. However, the way we live our lives, modern lives, it does. And that's because we're all mm -hmm. used to being connected by the internet now. And uh, there was this huge thing um, back in 1859 that uh, it's called the Carrington event. And that's just mm -hmm. after the telegraph came out and it wiped out telegraph stations all over the planet. It was this just huge influx of solar radiation that hit us. Nowadays, if that same thing were to hit Earth, it would wipe out all of the satellites or a lot of our satellites up in space. And internet, because of the interconnections from continent to continent, would go down. So you'd still have a local network, which luckily for us, if you live here in South Florida with us, you know, congratulations, we happen to have a node right here in Miami. So we would be reflecting right off of that node we would have our own local internet still working, but you wouldn't get out past the nodes that we have down here. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, you go to an event when, you know, pre-pandemic days, and yeah. it's too many people there and the cell phone towers are jammed. Exactly. Just imagine things. what's going to happen if something like this falls down so on I, top of us. Yeah. So w were they predicting that something like this could happen again? I think I remember seeing yeah. something about 2012. We yeah, just there was one in 2012 that happened. It just wasn't as big as they thought it would be. Um, and they've been learning more and more about these. Uh, they do come in waves. Uh, there's actual seasons of them uh, because they go with the sunspot seasons. So we have another five years before the heavy part of the sunspot, sunspot season picks up and that's when mm -hmm. it would be mo more likely that we would get it mm -hmm. well so yeah just after we're all done with the finally done with the pandemic then we get <laughs> uh, yeah it's always something right there's so always the gonna be something out there crazy the, enough for us to do the weather um, in space yep we start raining uh sharks and meteors and Oh, yeah. And, and one of the stories we didn't even pick today, they had a fire up on the space station this morning. It was just oh, a small gosh. little one, but it, they put it out right away and everybody went right back to sleep. But yeah, I mean, it's just as we get more and more things up there in space, we have to start paying attention to these things that are global events and solar system wide events mm -hmm. and not just, well, it's 
going to be raining in South Florida this week. You know, we have King Tides coming up this weekend. You know, for oh, us, that's a big thing. But, you know, we have uh, starting tomorrow in Fort Lauderdale, King Tide season, guys. And, you know, I'm not a native of, of South Florida, so I'm mm -hmm. still learning about hurricane patterns and weather. I've experienced tornado watches and all that stuff, but not hurricanes and, and living on the coast with king tide so this Holy is this a, is this something where surfers go out or you don't go no, out oh okay so really quickly for everybody out there what a king tide is is when you have a high tide and the moon is full at the same time so you get an extra foot or two rise in your tides and oh. in some low lying areas miami uh venice italy um has king tides all the time fort lardell so you will actually get some of water just on the streets where you wouldn't normally expect it uh oh. when it's really bad right outside of uh main library down here in fort lauderdale we will get some water on the streets because we're right oh. off the new river so yeah it, it's it'll be an interesting thing to see what happens out there at arlick i bet you uh the park will have some extra water in it on friday afternoon yeah. drainage is not that great sometimes when it's we are heavy. at sea level so. there you go <laughs> Yeah. There was a, another interesting story that I that I spotted in the news, and I knew you were going to be on, so I wanted to grab it, Makiva. Um, yeah, this was really interesting to me because, uh, first off, one of the famous black painter, first famous black painters. He's someone who did a great, did good stuff. Grew up here in the United States, decided to move to Paris um, in the late 1800s, but. What caught my eye because it showed up on all my tech stuff was how they've using radar and everything to start looking at images. And here's one of them that you can't see anymore in the paintings because he painted over them mm -hmm. or he changed them. And this one here, here's an example, Mikiba, for you where this is the uh, current painting we can all see. But then here's where he actually had extra play settings on there, how he designed the person's things. I was like, wow. And I'm like, oh, wait, we keep it. Well, you've got stuff in, in the Ehrlich vaults and everything. We've got to figure out a way to get some of this scanned. Listen, I, it would be really great to, to um, look at some of our pieces, our original pieces. We have some, some prints, but we do have some original artwork. So it's actually just kind of um, really fascinating to see the artistic process, but then also thinking about just uh, at that particular time period, um, like the scarcity of material. So that that yeah. one image of the uh, um, Jesus and Mary, where he completely changed the direction of the painting um, um, from vertical to horizontal and to be able to see that with the x-ray um, because I'm, I'm trying to figure out whether or not the technology is like really that advanced or if it's kind of like basic kind of x-ray technology that they're using. I couldn't get quite enough it's, it's information. A new, it's out of it's a newer type of x-ray equipment because uh -huh. it doesn't um, affect it. You, do, you get less radiation affecting the uh -huh. actual material and it's got a Ooh. finer tuning to it. So you can actually, um, in the really, really high end versions of this, you can actually go layer by layer through oh, paint. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't think that the they've done it with some Da Vinci's also information um, about what the technology is, but certainly at the African American Research Library and Cultural Center, you can come and learn more about Tanner. Um, my my experience with Tanner is the the famous image called the banjo lesson, and about two years ago we had a a print uh of the the banjo lesson um and music inspired sort of by um that imagery as a part of one of our ex exhibitions we had ex now, is that the one he of, had in the white as uh charles in the chat brings up that, that he was the first african-american painter to have his painting in the white house is that the banjo one that was in the white house or which know, one was it sure i just know like like in terms of art history and being introduced to black um, fine artists that that is one of the standout images that you'll always see is the banjo lesson. So it's a kind of almost similar to this thankful, uh, the thankful mm -hmm. pool where there's an older man and a younger child and he's showing the child the the banjo and what we assume to be a lesson that's either starting or ending. 
Um, but yeah, Tanner is is definitely preeminent in terms of of black art and American art. Um, yeah. And, and so, but this technology really is it's yeah. interesting to see. I, I, that's, that, you know, I was nothing... really impressed by by you know in the fact of they're not going by only like I said, Da Vinci's and Rembrandt's things that everybody on the planet knows, but mm -hmm. highlighting some other artists that not everybody knows and go grab something like that. You know, Bob, I actually got to watch maybe two weeks ago um, the the documentary on Netflix about Bob Ross. Oh. And how at the end of, well, I don't want to be a spoiler. Spoiler alert, plug your ears up. How like the the machine that that family has turned the Bob Ross name into, and now there's not any real way to authenticate what is a real Bob Ross mm -hmm. and what's not. Um, I wonder if if there are. I bet you something like this could figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, something. Yeah, something like this to whether or not you could figure out. You know, if 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 there is a way to authenticate um, time date. I don't know, but. Um, and thank you to uh, Charles in the chat. He he came up with the painting name for us. It's Sand Dunes at Sunset in Atlantic City. It's the name of the painting that uh, Tanner had up in the White House. Oh, okay. I have to Sand Dunes at Sunset. I write it down. Yeah. But you can see, uh, here's this final thing here for you, is you can see all the different layers of types of paint that were being that he was using, as you said, having to reuse and redo things, mm -hmm. um, just because of how it's it was. Really, it's really it's interesting. Really, yeah, really interesting. And so, talking about, I know this is tech talk, and we're looking at at technology and its impact. Um, but we do have a great program that's coming up. We're announcing very soon that we are accepting artists. Um, we've we've we've. Uh, we have a new class of artists for the art and activism. Um, oh, excellent. And nice. so the news will be coming out very soon. So we'll have some fine artists producing um, art and we'll debut all of that in spring of next year. Um, but this is a, a wonderful opportunity to support underrepresented artists yeah. in the community who yeah. once were like, Tanner and hopefully the support that we give them that they don't mm -hmm. have to go to Paris to be able to find space yeah. Yeah. Um, for to be able to practice their craft and for people to see it and, and experience it and impact their that lives. That is right up our alley here at Creation Station. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. There was one other story today that we have to talk about. Um, yeah. because this is probably, you know, no matter whether you pay attention to tech or not, this hit your news feeds. <laughs> um, so Facebook and Ray-Ban have been talking about for months that they were going to put out a set of smart glasses. And then last night, this morning, Ray-Ban intentionally probably leaked out some photos of what they were uh, going to talk about today. And then later on this afternoon, they actually did talk about it. And so I just want to throw up these pictures here of what these look like. These are smart glasses in a way. This is not augmented reality. If you've been around us and seen like HoloLens or Magic Leap, this is not anything like that. This is much more like a snap lens where it has two cameras built in. It's kind of hard to see in that picture there, and that's their point. They're trying to make it so that you can't really quite tell where those cameras are on there and stuff like that. So that was the preview one, and then today they actually revealed it, and you can see a picture of what they really look like when you're wearing them out there on the street and going around doing stuff. They have the two small cam. They have two small cameras on them, right here at each of the corners. They have headphones built in, speakers, not headphones, and uh, touch buttons on them to do the things. What do you think, Makiba? Um, I'm, I'm a little skeptical. You remember Google Glasses? <laughs> uh-huh, exactly. Yep, I, I, I did. We tried to get some for Creation Station, and we couldn't. Yeah. I don't know. Those Google Glasses didn't really go anywhere. Um. They did for a minute, but I don't know anybody who really, 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 really used them in any kind of way. So I don't know. Um, 
it's kind of cool because they're Ray-Bans. But then the other thing is, is that are they sunglasses or are they fake glasses? I, I'm, I'm off. I'm kind of. Sun, they are sunglasses. They are, they are regular sunglasses. They do come with polarized. They do have um, all the stuff for that. But I'm practical uh, only, to the point where can 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 they also be prescription? <laughs> well, so far, no. That's my thing. I need prescription glasses. I, right. I'm not going with this, which is one of my problems with the Magic Leap devices. You, the Magic Leap devices, you have to get a special prescription insert for them. Where the Microsoft mm -hmm. devices, it just goes right over your existing glasses, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and like you mentioned with the Holo with with um, Google Glass, this has the recording capability and everything. Um, if you can see where my mouse cursor is up here, there's a little dot right up here. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, there's a white light that will shine on there, a little LED that will shine when you're actually recording. You know, my friend has some glasses that I think he probably bought off of Amazon for like $50 that does recording and stuff like that now i don't think it's linked up to the internet and stuff like that like what this appears to be yeah but, these these go to an app and you yeah, hit on that one right there these go to a special app with facebook mm -hmm. so you have to give we've talked about this before on the vr stuff you have to start giving facebook a lot of your information if you don't already have a facebook account you're going to be required to have one uh, there has not enough news out yet whether this app that they're pairing it with has to be paired with your Facebook account or not. Everybody presumes it does. Does it work without being logged into Facebook or not? We don't know. Like, you don't have to be logged into Facebook. You can be and still use Instagram. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. These are some of the things that are going to be coming up here in a minute. Yeah, Facebook owns WhatsApp. So if since it has speakers yep. and it has text recognition, I'm assuming then there could be some linking to where you're just walking down the street, kind of talking to yourself, but maybe you're doing yep. voice to text to people. Yeah, in, in theory, in theory, that would be an, a really nice feature. Um, in some of the user reviews, the early uh, ones, they people did mention that it was easier to just tap the thing on the side of the glasses to take a picture of where they were rather than digging out your phone and trying to take a good picture quality of the camera on these is obviously nowhere near as good as your phone is um but 300 bucks i know crazy people who spend more than that just on regular sunglasses yeah well like i said if they allow it to have prescriptions in it maybe you can use yours your <laughs> there you go nice that's a nice way get, get insurance to pay for this for me that right. Mean, it, that's that's not a bad thing. I don't. But uh, I wonder about the picture quality because that's the other thing. Like it's one thing to point and shoot, but sometimes yeah. where your eyes are looking and where the the cameras are positioned on the glasses, you might be yeah. looking in the direction, but the kind of quality of picture that you take, yeah, might not be quite what you think it is. And they're bo they're both five megapixel cameras, so. That sounds great if you've been using cameras for a long time, but I mean, your modern iPhones and Android are all at 12 mm -hmm. virgin on 24 now. So yeah, yeah is, we're getting there. Um, by the way, I did, yeah, I want to point out to everybody here, if, if you have not noticed, we've been doing the um, orange all day long today. Uh, today is uh, September is hunger action month. Um, as our cool library fact. So if you're out there, make sure you, you, there's lots of donations around the county for that. Um, and uh, you can all grab that anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. McKeever. That's awesome. I forgot. <laughs> that is great. Uh, now, let me see. You, now, you started to give us uh, that cool thing about the new feature that you guys have coming up. But you also have Ashley Bryant Art, the Ashley Bryant Festival is coming up here with over there at Arlex uh -huh. soon. That's happening on that. Saturday. So Saturday, we will be hosting the um, Ashley Bryan um, art series. It's going to be virtual because we're still not doing in-person programs, but we are hosting award-winning photographer Nina Cruz. Um, her book, a Girl Like Me, is a photography collage book. Um, and Ashley Bryan um, series, it's named after the um, illustrator as well as book uh, writer, author, 
um, Ashley Bryant, who has for a very long time centered the narratives of, of, of black and brown children in children's literature. Um, and so when Arlequin started, founded, um, we have a collection of his artwork and books. And um, we continue this celebration by honoring another person of African descent during the same kind of work. And so this weekend, um, we will be hosting Nina Cruz. Um, there's a special portion for the um, for teachers and educators to participate in, in terms of understanding multicultural literature in the classroom. But then also there is a family friendly event um, called the uh, Take and Make. So you can come by the library, pick up the supplies to make, and Nina Cruz is going to lead um, uh, participants in a kind of collage making virtual event. So if you're local, you can come pick up the supplies and then join us on um, Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. Um, to uh, learn more about her book, Girl Like Me, and illustration and art and all that fun stuff. And is all the Ashley Bryant stuff online yet? I know there was a project working on that. So, so of all of our past guest um, uh, awardees uh, who have all either been like Coretta Scott King book award winners or illustrators, um, they are in our Ashley Bryan, um, uh, it's called the Ashley Bryan Room, um, and it's an online virtual kind of space where you can learn more about the artists, learn more about the artwork that's featured here, because each artist, when they come, they, they actually gift us with a piece of their art. So we have a growing collection from for the past almost 20 years. Yeah. So, uh, But you can check out who has participated uh, with that particular um, series over the last past 19 years. It's 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 amazing. It was I loved working there. It was there's so much fun stuff around that building. If you don't if you have not been to Arlick yet, you just need I don't care where you are in South Florida. You actually might need to, to come down. If you're not in Florida, come on down to come see us. It, it's an amazing building. And we've yeah, got some and next great year stuff there. We are celebrating 20 years. Oh, yeah. so we've, been, we've been talking about technology and all that. Bob has been um helping us with some of our kind of virtual reality with our virtual Harlem exhibit. And then we we're going to do some fun things this year. Yeah. And then we had the, um, the 3d scans of our African artifacts from different um, countries in the continent of Africa. So you can actually see those and experience. Yeah. Those. We actually had, we featured that on the show. I want to say about six months ago, eight months ago, oh, we, we yeah. featured that on here as one of those things. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. P. We could just keep on going. I know this is this is the kind fun. of stuff. Just got started, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'll be I, back. Good. Yes, we would have to have you back. And happy belated Star Trek Day, since you have all of that kind of space. Yeah, we, I bet you we have people here who were, who knew it was Star, Star Trek Day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we did have somebody in the um, chat asking asking us about the Apple glasses. Um, it was due to come out today. I'm not sure that they actually uh, I haven't seen the actual press conference and stuff. So we'll probably cover that next week um, when we get a chance to see what comes out. We will let me throw up our final slide here. Again, thank you everybody for being here with us for Tech Talk Weekly. If you have a favorite librarian or a favorite library that you want to see featured, Creation Station at Broward.org. We'll see you all next week. Have a great day. Stay safe. Bye-bye.